this time on Gambler Spec, we're working on putting Air Ride in the front of the Taser. Let's get started. All right, so first thing, got the car up on some jack stands, and we're taking a look here at the front suspension. So a couple things right off the bat. These are the plates I've got. Super cheap on eBay. Couldn't believe how inexpensive they were. I think they were like $26, and you get all four tops and bottoms so the main thing I don't know on this is the shock so we'll get in here I'll pull the spring out pull the shock out and then we need to work out one plate here for the bottom um, just has the two mounting bolts and then we'll have to work out how we're gonna do the top um, not exactly sure yet I didn't see a ton of good videos on how to do it on this year so pull the spring out pull the shock out and then see how the mounts are going to go and then we'll get to figuring exactly how much room we're going to need for the airbags uh, and then after we get the airbags in I think we'll wait to the end to kind of assess the shock um, I have some thoughts most most likely we'll end up putting it somewhere here on the back on the outside but we'll get started by taking these shocks off and the springs and just kind of see what we're working with as far as the upper and lower mounts for these. All right, so got the spring out. That is not the easiest thing ever. So the way that I did it is I got a jack up underneath here. I actually had to come in with my, I think they're McPherson, McPherson strut spring compressor kit that I have. And the problem is the threads are too long. So when you go to get them in on the spring, you're running in here to the lower control arm. So I actually had to come in and chop out about an inch of the thread and then go ahead and tighten that down as much as I could and then get a big pry bar in there and just pull out on the spring and we got the spring out. So now we've got to just go through the painstaking process, mostly brainstorming and figuring out how the mounts are going to look and also uh, what kind of distance we need or what kind of a spacer we need to get our airbag at the right spot All right, so this is what I came up with for the mounts for the airbag. So this is the upper mount This pipe which I bought is four inch pipe. That's four inch inside diameter and it is absolutely perfect uh, And the reason why it's perfect is you can see this nice rubber gasket which was at the top of where the spring would mount up inside of the frame um, it fits perfectly inside the four inch uh, piece of pipe. So that gives you a perfect place to um, have it set up at the top. And then this is my upper uh, CNC mount for the bag. All I did was go get a bolt. This is way too long. I think I got eight inches. Probably could have been you know, seven for sure. Maybe even six inches long would have worked. This is two and a half inches tall. The space that I made for the top. So that'll go up and in there. Uh, the bolt will come up through that hole that you can see and then there's just a big washer nut that sits on there um, And then for the bottom where the spring sits uh, It's it's curved. It's not flat because Bottom of the spring is also curved. It's not flat So it wouldn't make sense for it to sit on a flat surface. So it's it's built to an angle to accommodate that spring um, so the way these bottom mounts work I ended up cutting them at an angle there's an inch difference one side is inch and a half one side is two and a half inches uh, and that way when it sits in there it kind of puts it at a little more of a, a level plane for the airbag to sit on and then this piece will come in and sit on top of there so right now I'm just waiting I've got the airbags on order they should be here on Wednesday but I'm kind of at a standstill until I can Get the bag in there and just make sure that the orientation is correct. I don't want to tack any of this stuff up without having the bag in place. So as soon as those get here, we'll be able to move forward with the airbags. Uh, in the meantime, I've got another project I'm working on, and that is the spoiler. So on my rack that I had previously, I put these trailer hitch receivers on the back uh, with the thought in mind that at some point I would want to add... A spoiler something in the back to kind of finish off the design of the car uh, and so now I'm looking to make that happen 
Uh, and so I bought something that uh, I'm hoping will work. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is what we got here. This is a gargantuan tank. I think at one point it held natural gas. Lately, they said it only held water uh, that they used to water some of the plants on the property. It is plus 10 feet long. I don't know exactly how long, just about 10 feet or just a little over there. Um, but I think the diameter is two feet and it is heavy, heavy, heavy duty. So the idea is come in here, draw me some lines, see if I can't make a couple straight lines in about a six foot width and then cut out just a slice, like a skateboard quarter pipe shape out of that. All right, so getting started here, I made a couple marks. The idea is if I cut this at six foot eight, so that's 80 inches wide, that should get me just inside this little fitting here on either side. And then we'll just have to start cutting it and see how it goes. It feels like it's pretty thick metal, um, but it's really difficult to get a straight line. There's not a real good reference. So I'm just gonna lay my ratchet strap around it, kind of eyeball it, gambler spec, and then probably cut into it with the angle grinder and then probably use the uh, reciprocating saw from there to try to cut a little bit of the way through. This thing is heavy. Uh, loading it onto the trailer it actually fell off the forklift and busted the wood on the trailer so it's extremely heavy i've got to get some of this cut off so i can at least work with it so i'll cut it here on the trailer and see how it goes So that turned out to be a huge disaster and did not work out. So this is what happened since that time-lapse video. You could see in the video, I kept stopping and looking over and over again because I kept thinking at any moment I was gonna break through the tank and then put my reciprocating saw and start cutting. Well, after I cut for the entire depth of the uh, cutting wheel I had left, I still wasn't through. I actually measured it at almost seven eighths of an inch that I was cut into the tank and still not through the metal. So at that point I knew there was no point in me cutting anymore because I can't use, I can't use that. A seven foot wide piece that's an inch thick, that thing's gonna weigh, you know, several hundred pounds. And that's, you know, hey, that's good downforce uh, for your spoiler, but not exactly what I'm looking for. So I went ahead and listed it on Facebook Marketplace, listed it on Craigslist, try to see if someone could buy it. The problem was in order for them to buy it, they had to have a way to get it off the trailer because it was too heavy for anyone to lift. Had no idea how much it weighed at the time. So I listed it for a while, had no, no takers. So uh, I ended up going to a scrap metal yard just outside of town and, and I looked through their yard and found exactly what I wanted to buy in the first place. Um, and so I talked to, to the guy and he agreed to buy my tank. And, uh, and then I would just buy this piece of culvert from him, uh, which is what I wanted in the first place. So I got, <laughs> got the pipe picked out, took my tank up to the front, weighed it, unloaded it, weighed it again. It ended up weighing 2,900 pounds. So that was way, way, way more than I ever expected. Uh, the listing when I bought it, he listed it as a possible smoker. There's no way. There's no way you could have ever made that into a smoker. It was just way, way, way overkill. So let me show you what I got instead. All right, so this is 20 inch culvert and you can see the thickness, so no question there. It's still pretty thick. Uh, but much, much easier to work with than that one. At least I know it's gonna hold its shape. And uh, I can actually lift one end of this 
as a whole. So once I cut that down to a quarter, I think that'll work out just fine. It's actually still a little long too. I need to cut down the length. Um, but the thickness, not sure exactly how thick that is. Maybe like a quarter of an inch. Um, and the total diameter is 20 inches. So I'm gonna make me a line. I'm looking at the seam here where this was welded together. And uh, I think that's where I'll start. I'll maybe measure on either side and then cut out the quarter pipe out of this and then see if we can make it into a spoiler. Okay, so we got the first cut done. You can see how much it relaxed when you cut that all the way through. Uh, so I just made a mark here for what looked like about a quarter pipe before it started to kind of go back on itself. Uh, made a mark and we'll just uh, keep on going. Not sure how far I'll get tonight, but we'll get this done here in the next day and a half. All right, so we got the metal cut off the piece of pipe and it took forever, but it's done. So now what I got to decide is how wide I want this thing to be. Uh, my first thought was the width of the tires. So I kind of got it mocked up on one side and then probably what we'll do is just come in and cut one end off and then just see what we think. <laughs> this thing is still really heavy. I bet you it's a hundred pounds. So we'll drop a little bit of weight by cutting this, you know, 18 inches or whatever that is off. And then we'll decide if that's still too wide. So I'm thinking tires first, and then we'll go to the fender if we need to go a little narrower. But the whole idea was for it to look a little bit ridiculous. And so I want it to be pushing the limits on width. So uh, I'm going to lay this out and draw a line and go ahead and cut it to the tire width. Okay, so this is how the mount turned out. I got the bolt cut to length, also uh, welded it inside of the mount, um, and then trimmed off the head of the bolt so that it's nice and flush. Um, so that gives me a nice way to bolt this in. And then I got the notch cut out for the airlines, and then the bolts go in through the top to bolt on the bag. So I got that all bolted up and then and tacked into place as far as on the mount and trying to see as far as fitment and it's going to be real tight in here especially up against the frame on the inside so i've already cut out some material i still got to trim out more uh because this doesn't have a lot of uh the suspension doesn't have a lot of movement doesn't have a lot of flex uh this bag is going to be compressed a lot of the time and so it takes up a ton of space so i'm going to spend the next little while coming in and grinding back, cutting back on this opening to get myself some more room and keep the bag from rubbing. Okay, so we got this bottom mount finished up here. Uh, right now, this is just, the plate is just tacked onto the pipe. And underneath, the way that I decided to mount it was using the original shock mounting holes. So this piece of um, bolt goes back into that same center hole of the plate just like the top does and then just drilled a couple holes that lined up with um, the old shock mounts in this piece of steel and then a hole in the middle for that bolt so pull this bolt back off now we got everything test fit and it seemed like it worked pull this bolt back off cut it down a little bit clean up the edges and then I'll be able to final weld this bottom mount and the top mount and then we can get everything painted up and I think we're about ready to install so we'll go to that point okay so apparently I ordered the wrong fittings off Amazon so I wasn't able to get that put together uh, the new fitting should be here tomorrow so we'll put that together probably on Monday anyways so this happened uh, while I was waiting for those fittings to come in, I took and cut a couple pieces of this two inch square, went ahead and drilled the hole for the pins so I could kind of get an idea of 
how this is going to look. Um, right now, I really struggled for figuring out how to hold this thing up. So I just welded on these just pieces of scrap to kind of hold it for me so I could get a feel, kind of imagine what it's like. So the toughest part is that the front is on jack stands, so the rake is not right at the moment. But elevation-wise, I kind of think this is going to work. It puts it uh, just slightly, slightly above the roof, I think. I won't really know until I get it back down off the jack stands and on airbags and, and see how the stance works out. But I feel like the height is pretty good. I actually started it out about six inches higher than that and it just looked absolutely ridiculous. But I think this is probably closer. Uh, I don't really know exactly how these mounts are gonna work out. I imagine I'll need to have something that comes off of here, maybe on both sides, and just kind of weld, weld something on the bottom. Maybe two braces or maybe just a one long one. Not exactly sure yet. But for sure, I won't be having all this two inch go all the way. There'll be some type of mount that will come off of there. But you kind of get an idea of the scope of it. It's going to be pretty ginormous, which is kind of the point. And I uh, started working on my end plates as well. So once I find some metal that, that is big enough, I'll get those cut. And uh, I think probably I'll wait to finish up these mounts now until I get the airbags done. Uh, that way I can kind of get a feel for the angle of this. I'm not sure if that's rotated too far under. I mean, it still looks, when you look at it, it still looks a little too tall. So I'm not sure if I need to rotate under or if I just need to cut some off. I'm not sure. I did want it to look cartoony, but that just, this right now looks a little bit more like a parachute than anything. So we'll get the airbags done on Monday, get this one side installed at least, and, uh, and then we'll get to work on the other side and we'll come back around to the spoiler once we get the airbags done. All right, we got everything installed now. Now that it's all together, there's not a lot of clearance right here. It's pretty close, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. I did at one point uh, stretch it out a little bit. I cut a slit and then pulled it out so it was get a little bit of clearance, but now that I bolted everything in, I think it just scooted a little bit more that way. So I'll have to monitor that, but I did run the airline through and just put a straighter on it for now. Test out, make sure I don't have any leaks. And uh, so far, so good. Everything looks all right. I just ran that right from the fitting inside of here through the little portal that I had cut open in the spacer and then up and into the firewall. This will be behind the brake line and some electrical stuff. So yeah, if this other stuff gets damaged, then the airline's probably the least of my concern. But that's in. Probably going to need to be torqued down and tightened up, but it seemed like it cycled okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and go over here to passenger side and just start duplicating that same process. I've got already got my pipes cut, which is nice, and that'll take out a lot of time just figuring out how tall everything needed to be. So we'll undo the shock, we'll undo the ball joint, we'll pull out the spring, and we'll get started on this side. All right, it's been a messy day, but we got some progress. I got the whole passenger side airbag pretty much done. Um, all the mounts, the pipe is just tack welded right now, so I could just test fit and make sure everything works. But as soon as like, I got clearance, uh, I just finished making the little end plate for the bottom to hold that bottom cup in. So next thing I got to do is just take everything apart and then throw some final welds on it, throw some paint on it, and we'll get it put back together. All right, so we got everything welded, painted up, got the lower mount, got the upper mount. Uh, so now what I've done is just run the airline through the path it's gonna go and put a straighter on here. And I'm gonna throw some air in this and just see if I have any leaks before I bolt it up in. Let me pause. Okay, so threw some air in there, just kind of listening, wiggling. Most of the time I've had leaks, it was pretty obvious right away. You could hear it or feel it. So that feels pretty good. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and get this in and see if we can't get the whole thing installed. Okay, so we got everything installed. All these bolts are going to have to be tightened probably multiple times. I'd imagine they're going to try to work themselves loose 
as things kind of break in. Uh, next thing, I got my air gauge pulled out, and what I've got to do is run these two lines into a T, uh, because the way I have this set up, I've got the back running to this side, pushing it up, inflates, pushing it down, deflates, so I'll run the fronts to the left side there, so you get the same function, uh, but with the front side. Okay, so we got everything joined in with the T. Not a ton of pressure in the tank, but put some air in. Take some air out. Seems to work. So I'm going to go ahead and get these jack stands out of here and set it on the ground and let's see what we got. Holy crap. All right, so this is... Uh, fully laid out. It's really hard to tell in this tiny garage, but this is low, 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 which is awesome. Oh man, I'm so excited about this. So you can see my eyeballed <laughs> bar over here apparently was off by more than I thought. We've got like an inch or an inch and a half clearance over there and we are touching on this side. So I have to come back and maybe cut that tube and just space it out just a little bit. Or something I mean it's not a big deal it's not gonna really be moving at this height but I might fix it because it might actually go a little bit lower I don't know if that's holding the body up or what but man that looks good uh, let me put this on a stand and see if I can get a good angle of uh, the suspension travel here I don't know how much air I have left in my tank it's been a few days since I ran it but let's see if we can bring this front up here Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Still going. Whoa, that's way more pressure I think than I'll ever have in it. That's 60 PSI. But you can see the difference in clearance now. This side that was touching. Tons of clearance on this side now. So dang <laughs> oh man i'm like shaking because i'm so excited about this so that's done uh i still got a little bit of stuff to work out i got mess in here with wires and i got to check the rubbing and all that but i really wanted to get this done uh so that i could kind of get a feel for what the spoiler is going to look like when it's all laid out and kind of get a good angle so i'm gonna drop this down so you can see the going down and then uh, maybe I'll back it out and see how it looks overall. All right, back down. so much fun okay so getting started today I've got to make some decisions on this spoiler uh, so now that I've got the stance kind of worked out looking at the spoiler just looks too tall unfortunately I really wanted to make it cartoon and ginormous but I think that's just a little too much so I'm gonna come back and take three inches off of that and then decide if I want the width to come in at all, I'm, I'm torn. Could go either way. So let me cut this, uh, at least cut it the long ways first and get it a little bit shorter and then kind of reassess if I think it needs to be uh, narrower as well. Okay, so we got that cut down. Definitely a lot shorter. I think I like it. I think it's gonna be good. I don't think I wanna trim the width. I'll probably just clean this edge up Looks like they cut it with a torch or something, but uh, I'll just clean that up so it's a little nicer and straighter. And then we can put the caps on. Something that was interesting when I cut that out, it's probably some science that I don't understand, but when I cut it out, it suddenly formed this like arc. 
shape, that piece that I cut off. So, huh, kind of interesting. But now that that's got less curve to it, I'm actually going to use that. Uh, I think when I make the braces, I'll do maybe a strip on either side of each of these two by twos. So one going to the top, one going to the front uh, on both sides. So I think that could work out good for me. Now I'm just working on these end plates, end caps, whatever they're called. Um, I got this piece of diamond plate, already got it. Uh, so thickness is pretty good. I think I'm gonna try it. Um, I don't know about having the diamond plate facing out. Might look cool, might look weird. Or diamond plate facing in. Maybe that's a thing, I don't know. But I've got the stuff anyway, so I'll go ahead and get this cut out. Uh, I think this is the shape I'm gonna go with. I trimmed it down quite a bit uh, now that the spoiler is not so tall. And so I'll get these two shapes cut out and then see what it looks like. Okay, so we got the shapes cut out and I just tacked them together. Oh, just tacked them together here. Um, basically the idea is that's gonna go in the end like this, but I also don't want it to be quite so deadly. So I'm gonna come back and just round the edges here. Um, take off some of these sharp points that I've got on it, but by welding them together, in theory, I should be able to get both sides to be the same. So I'm gonna get out the grinder, gonna knock down these corners, and then I'm also gonna smooth this out and uh, get ready to tack up these end plates and see how it looks. Okay, so we got these end plates put on. They're just kinda of tacked into place for now. I feel like they're pretty close. Um, but the next thing I've got to work out, I got some air thrown in the bags because I got to back this out. I got to figure out now that I've got the end plates on where this is going to live in space to where it looks flowing and proportional to the whole vehicle. So I'm going to back this thing out and, uh, spend a few minutes ponderizing exactly how I want that to be, where I want it to be. Okay, so it took me a bit to kind of figure out what I wanted to do, but I got everything in place, came back, and actually I had it setting on top of this two inch, but instead I notched it. You'll have to see in a minute. I skipped ahead here to welding the back. Had it all tacked up, and uh, I was afraid to lose my positioning, so I went ahead and welded everything here in the back. Uh, welds ranging from, was my gas even on, to how come I can't do it like that every time? So... Some good, some bad, either way, it's, uh, I think it's gonna hold. So that's all done. Uh, I'm just letting this cool down just a little bit and then I'll flip it over and weld the top side and then we'll see what it looks like. So here's the wing, painted-ish. I only had one can left so it's a little thin. But got the wing painted, got it put back in the mounts. Uh, I do need to put some type of a gusset system from the underside of this there's a ton of leverage on this wing so it really wants to just bend these welds so if i come in and put a gusset up underneath here i think that will fix that problem uh, at least for the most part so that's about the only thing i got left i might repaint it again when i repaint everything generally after i do a big change all my paint ends up being scraped off um but since it's just a rust-oleum flat black. I'll just come back in and touch that up before my next you know, car show or event or whatever I go to. Make it look decent. But overall, that's pretty much done. I like the placement. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's interesting because it doesn't look quite as dramatic as I imagined. I think maybe the black takes away some of the drama. But super cool. Happy to have that on there. Definitely changes the feel of the vehicle quite a bit. Now I'm working here on the mess. I've got a few things to do. I've got to figure out a shock mount. I've got to figure out the wire rubbage. And then also I'm gonna come in here and see if I can just make sure on both sides I'm trimmed all the way back so I don't rub. Um, I do have a set of tires just kinda chilling over here waiting for me. So as soon as I can feel confident that I'm not gonna gash them up like I have been on these tires then uh, I'll go ahead and swap them out but that's going to be a little bit of work I've got to come in I think I'm going to trim out some of these I was a little hesitant at first to you know cut and pull 
and chuck all the wires because I want to make sure this car worked when I first uh, deleted the body. But now that it's been running and working for, you know, what, three years now, uh, I think it's safe to come in and start trimming this back a little bit more. I do have a wire for my um, sprayer, my windshield washer fluid. Um, so if I can figure out a place to put that bottle, I would like to add that back at some point. Um, but ABS stuff, I think I'll get rid of the wires for that and anything else I see that's not being used, try to trim it back and then come up with a different mount or something here because this is just, it's just ridiculous and it's in the way and it's going to rub on the tire. So got to make some changes there and get some more clearance and then uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, so, so far we made more of a mess, but I have gotten rid of some of the wires here. I undid the uh, ABS harness there, and then just cut all the wires, pulled them back out through to the other side. So I made it a little bit of a disaster at the moment, but I'm really just trying to see what I need, what I don't need, so that I can kind of come up with a plan. So, this is what I'm thinking. I want to add back in this washer fluid. It doesn't really fit this way, but if I can get it to go this way, I think it'll fit. There's the plug there. I still have the other wire. So, come up with a, a bracket that will hold this up. Okay, so that works for me in a few different ways. Um, number one, I get the washer fluid up. Number two, I can also use that same bracket to pull some of these back and attach those. Maybe a, a secondary bracket that comes off this bolt on the master cylinder. And then I'm thinking probably base the mount for the washer fluid off of a shock mount. Right, so you got something like this coming out and then it hits into the top of the shock and then the bottom of the shock would attach somewhere down here on the lower control arm. So I think the next thing, this is a terrible way to mount it when you're doing it this way because uh, I really need it to just attach from one side probably. So I will see if I can pull this, uh, I don't even know what this thing is, this little plate, this little mount see if that'll come out, cut off one side, see if it'll push through, and then use a bolt, maybe throw a bolt off the lower control arm, and then feed the bolt through that, that'd be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, and if not, if I can't get that out, then maybe I'll chop that whole mount off and make my own, maybe similar to the top. Uh, there's a hole there, so I also thought you kind of flip that upside down, the concept, and do the bolt on the bottom, that goes through there with the same two bushing style. So you'd have one going into this hole at the bottom, coming up, hitting the same kind of mount at the top. So I'm gonna work on the shock, I think, and see if I can get this uh, lower mount to be a little more friendly for what I'm trying to do. All right, so after I cut those tabs off, um, it was a hollow piece of metal, but the hole wasn't quite big enough. So all I did was just drill it out to half an inch. That way I can throw a bolt through it um, I drilled a couple holes here in the lower control arm to try to decide if I go more in, that's less distance, the shock has to go. Um, but the problem was when I had this upper mount on, like this, um, this mount that was closer in, right in here, it didn't have enough flex. So the shock, if you look at the angle on these, this one kind of turns, has like a, a turn in versus this one which is straight. So by the time it went up to the upper mount, the shock couldn't bend over. Um, it couldn't bend over enough to get to the mount because of the angle that it was bolting through the lower control arm. So I did go back to this hole here. Um, and then on the upper mount, I just took a piece of metal, found out about the distance I want to be at full compression and at full extension on my shocks and just kind of welded that piece in there. So it's pretty ugly at the moment. I'm gonna cut off the top of this um, angle up at the top here because that's not gonna be needed. And then uh, drill a hole in it and then put it back on. And in theory, I should be able to then bolt my shock in and test the up and down, 
see if we got enough distance. It was it was hard because it was either bottoming out or topping out um, because of this mounting hole. It was just too long of a distance for that shock. I don't want to buy other shocks. I just bought these and I really just want to make them work. So I'm going to cut this down, cut the extra stuff off, weld it up, and then get it attached to the car. So it's all welded up. Slap some paint on there just so it was decent. Man, I struggled making good contact on the one side on the welds, but it's on there and it feels pretty strong. So I'm going to go ahead and get this airbag shoved back in there. I did take it to the top and bottom of the shock and it seems like it's as good as it's going to get for this setup. I mean, it, it seems like it tops out and it bottoms out, but right only at the bump stops. So I think that's about best I'm going to be able to do. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this airbag in and get everything hooked back up. I'll put back together here. There's the shock installed. Got the airbag back in. You can see the bump stop. I mean, it's just kissing the frame there and the shock is bottoming out. So then we let it down, full extension, and oh, we can't see it. So you're hitting the bump stop there and you're bottom down the shock. So we got some, we got some travel, about as much as this factory suspension is going to give us. So this side is, I think, uh, done. Pretty happy with the way it came out. I got to get a different bolt for the bottom. It's a little bit too long or a little too short. I had one of each, but I'll go grab a couple that match and are the right length. And I have no previous knowledge or experience with suspension like this, so who knows if it's going to work. But there's a shock on it and an airbag, so we're done. Let's go to the other side. All right, so passenger side went a lot quicker since I kind of knew what I was doing. And I was actually kind of happy with a couple of my welds, which was nice. Uh, so this is all done. The other side, I ended up having to adjust the bolt slightly because as you would turn this in, it would actually hit on the inside here. What is this, like a, the spindle or whatever? As you would turn, it would hit on the shock. So I ended up moving that inboard and so I just copied it onto this side and uh, it's tight but it clears and that's at full lock so I think that's pretty good you can see there's a little bit of gap here which means that at full droop I'm going to be bottoming out my shock just slightly uh, I think if I put a couple washers under here it'll help with that um, but yeah I think that's pretty good I'm going to go ahead and throw some paint on here and then uh, see what to do next probably clean up some of this wires and uh, work on the clearance okay so working on the wiring and the clearance issues here on the driver's side I got most of these wires kind of pushed up and out of the way wrapped up took the ABS wires all out to kind of thin it out just a little bit streamline it um, came up with this I'm calling it the wire loom flute patent pending Basically, I just took that bolt um, from the brake master and I had this piece of tubing, which already had like a, a flattened out spot with a hole, threw a 90 degree angle on it and then drilled some holes, different angles so I could kind of throw some zip ties through. I still have some extra holes in case I needed to zip tie a few other things, but that seemed to work to get everything up and out of the way. Got my uh, relays tied up nice. Um, or that held them in place really nicely with that metal bar. Uh, back here at the at the ECU, uh, cut this piece at the top so I could get a little bit more angle out of the, the bend. Um, and I think that's going to work. Uh, I think this must be the emergency... No, this is the emergency brake cable. This maybe is the Speedo, possibly. Um, just kind of zip-tied that up and out of the way. And... Uh, we got some more clearance. I also took a sledgehammer here and beat the crap out of this panel. I cut it down the side just so it would kind of have more give to it. So I've got to come back and just tack this back up in place. And I think we got the clearance that we need on the driver's side. So we'll get that tacked up, paint it up, and then work on cleaning this mess up across to the passenger side. I wasn't able to make uh, this, 
washer fluid bottle work very well. It was just too big and awkward. Couldn't ever find a good place for it. So I did find this one um, off of Amazon. And I think most, most cases they were saying if people were using them in UTVs. Um, but for me, I think it'll work perfectly. It's much smaller, which I don't really think I need, you know, that much capacity anyway. I just need some for when my windshield gets filthy on the trail or whatever. So I think it's going to live right in here in this region. And I've actually got the wiring coming back across, um, for the factory washer fluid sprayer. So we'll bring that wiring back around and then get this cleaned up and get the clearance all figured out and washer bottle installed next. All right, we got the washer bottle mounted up over here. Just took a piece of my diamond plate that I had, welded it onto the frame, a couple of bolts through there. That's ready to go. Uh, I got it all wired in and it does work. I haven't buttoned that up yet because I do need to run the hoses. Uh, and I'm waiting on that until I get a new windshield cowl for my windshield wipers so when i initially took everything apart i was obviously trying to cut like as much as i could off the thing and i cut out this whole tray that normally would sit here uh, i did not realize though that these wipers they go into like hide mode when you turn them off so they suck down in well now what happens is they fall off the windshield and then you can't turn them back on without getting out and lifting them so that's not going to work so i'm going to get me a new uh used cowl out of a junkyard uh, that way I can fix that problem. Probably should do something about this windshield. It's getting pretty bad. So windshield and windshield wiper cowl will be next time. But we got the shock done. We got the airbags done in the front. We got the uh, wiper fluid bottle installed and wired up. We got all the wires cleaned up. We got the shock and the airbag on this side as well. Uh, I got the gussets finished up on the wing. I actually used the ratchet strap to kind of pull this forward a little bit. That way it uh, it just seemed like it was kind of sagging from the weight. So I pulled it forward, then added these gussets up underneath. This is just a strip of that uh, big pipe that I had cut for the wing. So I just took a piece of that and welded it up onto the bottom. Threw some paint on it and uh, yeah, it's a lot more sturdy now than it was before. But that's all finished up. So I think that's going to do it for me on this episode of Gambler Spec. A little preview of what we got going on next time right here. Been waiting for this moment to get these tires put on, so that'll be in the next episode. And then uh, check these out. Found these at a yard sale, and a uh, lady had them marked 5 bucks a piece. I only had $7 in my wallet, but luckily she took that. So 7 bucks. I got this set of seats. Looks like they are out of a T-Rex. And I don't know that they've ever really been used. They've got some spill on them, which it looks like that will wipe off. But next episode, we'll get these new tires put on. We'll get the new seats installed, get everything cleaned up, and uh, maybe touch up the paint a little bit, and then we should be good to go. But that's it for this time. Appreciate you watching.